Welcome, comrades, to an interactive Hearts of Iron 4 experience where your decisions matter. Here's how to play. When a choice becomes available, the timestamps corresponding to all of the options will be shown on screen. To select your decision, either go to the description and select the matching timestamp, or you can manually move the slider to the allocated time. Remember, every choice you make shapes the outcome of the game, where some endings are better than others. So without further ado, like and subscribe, and let's get to a start. And for this installment, we are playing as Bulgaria and Kaiser Redux. Yes, Bulgaria is one of my favorite nations in Hearts of Iron 4 Vanilla, so playing in Kaiser Redux is uh, very exciting. There are 12 different endings that you can find in this video, all leading to a completely different path, so I hope you enjoy. Okay, what do we got here? We got Ferdinand the First. He's an Austrian noble. All right, and uh, military pensions. Okay, only 20%, only 20%. <laughs> I say that lightly, it's uh, quite a bit. And then alien economy, so factory output and product efficiency cap. That's only very few national spirits. Now Bulgaria found herself in a precarious position with little to no allies in the Balkans, despite remaining the dominant military power in the area. Glory to the Tsardom of Bulgaria and the Tsar. Now we can't actually go down any of our political branch trees yet. Well, because you guys are gonna make the decision. But uh, yeah, we have to wait till an event happens at the Balkan War, you'll, you'll see. To get you up to speed, essentially Bulgaria won the First World War with Germany. Now Romania, Serbia, and Greece are very angry at Bulgaria and want to take back the lands that Bulgaria won in the First World War. So uh, basically, we're screwed. Okay, I might actually go to free trade just to get all this factor output and everything. Elastic defense. The division, oh, that's pretty good. Supply consumption, and then army experience or static defense, entrenchment, entrenchment speed. Now I'm looking at all these defense stats because the Balkan War is a very real possibility where a pact with Romania, Serbia, and Greece declare war on me at the same time, and maybe even the Ottomans can get involved because they want to take Western Thrace from us. Yes, we're in a bit of a, a situation, so looking at this defense is very important. Oh, uh oh, here's the Belgrade Pact. Is Romania going to join? Surely Romania is going to join. If they don't, I'll actually be so surprised. Now, Romania not joining the Belgrade Pact was a huge deal for us because we are coming up to our first decision. We would receive an ultimatum from Serbia asking us to concede land. Here it is, the ultimatum from Serbia. An ultimatum from the Belgrade Pact has arrived in Sofia. They are demanding that we hand over all territory seized in the Weltkrieg. The members of the Belgrade Pact are threatening us with war if we refuse. Okay, so you have chosen the Bulgarian Aggregarian National... Yeah, that rhymes. Bulgarian Aggregarian National Union. That's how it goes. Anyway, what am I talking about? Anyway, social conservatism plus 20%. The BNZ... The BZNS becomes a ruling party. All right, here we are. Let's just... Hang on, I to make sure I'm recording. Yep, yeah, I'm, I'm recording. Cool. There we go. We got this guy. And we are a blue country with social conservatives. Oh, anyway, okay, we have... The Bulgarian national focus bypassed, meaning we have control of this focus tree right here. Oh, look at this. Officials, officialize the orange guard, demilitarization. This is like the most pacifist thing I can think of. Look how pacifist this is. Peace and order. Hey, well. Now our farmers are empowered, so that's pretty cool. But also, we actually get really good attack and defense bonuses on core territory. And the core territory is all around us. Consumer goods, 30%, but we get fighting for the motherland. Division attack on defense. Oh, an attack on core territory, plus 10%. And hey, remember, this is still considered core territory, so we do get bonuses. And then demilitarization, bunch of stability, bunch of political power, limited conscription, so we reduce... Oh yeah, add civilian economy. With these kind of bonuses for attacking on our core territory, I will make sure that it is my goal to take back our core lands from, from Greece and Serbia. They stole it off us with an ultimatum. Can you believe that? Look at this. It's like, oh, but socialism at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's not capitalism. It's not capitalism. I'm not getting, I'm not getting political, okay? I'm not, I'm not letting you know what my political values are, so <laughs> you, got, you guys will never know. So you guys can never attack me for it in the comments. Wait, why would I have military police? That doesn't make any sense for my ideology. I'm trying to research things that would make sense for my ideology. Military police? But the, the, the agrarianism? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, Serbia declared war on Iria. Hey, look at that. Maybe they will become Yugoslavia. And if they become Yugoslavia, our focus tree actually lets us become part of Yugoslavia. Here. Stembalovsky's dream. 
Now, since Serbia is not at war with the rest of Austria-Hungary, it is a very real possibility that they could win, especially with Greece on their side, and maybe they become Yugoslavia, and hey, our focus tree lets us become Yugoslavia, well, a part of it anyway. Maybe this is the Yugoslav ending, who knows? What? The Russian Empire joined the Reich's Pact? That is crazy, man. That is insane. Dude, I've played, this is my last time playing over this same kind of time period because there's all four options, right, that you have to choose. And this is like the last one I did, the fourth option. And never did this happen. Never did Russia join the Reich's Pact. They formed the Moscow Accord. That's so crazy how so much things can change doing the, even, even the same, off the same save game, right? I've just made one different decision and played a brand new like timeline and so much has changed already. Unfortunately, Black Monday is still around and it's hurting our economy, so I gotta get rid of that as soon as possible. Uh, okay, keep doing this, uh, this, and then we'll get rid of Black Monday. And everyone will be happy because the economy will be good. And then uh, Romania decided to do something a little bit funny. They, they, I don't know if this is in their focus tree, but apparently they can unify with a country in Africa. And what? The Federation of Rhodesia? What are you talking about, Federation of Rhodesia? Huh? What? Is the game okay? Is this is, is this is this supposed to happen? Is this like the Romanian colony or something? Why is Rod Rhodesia? And I have another even bigger question. Why is there a British watermark on the flag? Rod Rhodesia mania. Yes, Rhodesia mania. <laughs> so weird, man. Wildlife Protection Agency. That sounds like a pretty agrarian thing to do. Okay. I don't know. If you ask me, hey, it definitely does. So now I decided to do something a little bit strange. I decided to send volunteers to Serbia. Now I know that's a bit weird considering we just submitted to Serbia and they hate us and everything, but I just wanted to see if they could form Yugoslavia so that I could join it and it would be really cool. So bear with me. Okay, we're defending Krajevo. However, unfortunately, my one division could not do a thing and the front line was very static. I literally couldn't do anything. It's, look at this, we go to limited conscription, civilian economy, stability and political power goes Reorganization of the military. Well, that's going to be an interesting event. Planned reform acts. Look at that. More stability. It's just infinite stability. The path to peace. We can reconcile with Balkan neighbors. Hey! Oh, let's do it. We're going to reconcile with the, the Balkan neighbors there. You know, as much as I was willing to reconcile with the Balkan neighbors, my neighbors were not willing to reconcile with me. The opinion was negative 200 no matter what I did. I would improve relations and it would not go up. The opinion was so terrible that they would not even change their mind. And when I tried to do the decision, it would just uh, disappear. Hey, there's no, no problem in that. Now, I would, I would press these buttons, but I tried these buttons in another playthrough and they just did nothing. So I'm going to wait. I'm gonna wait. It takes 35 days, but it just disappeared straight away. 2% recruital. What? Wait, wait, wait. We're fighting for the motherland. 2% recruital population. Holy. That's some uh, good stuff right there. Peace and order. AO, f AO modifier. Focus on defense. I oh, focus on offense. Negative 25%. A new Agrigarian allegiance. Alliance. It should say allegiance. What does it mean, alliance? I don't have an alliance with anyone. No one was my friend. Everyone around me hates me. But we remove rebuilding the state. So that's good. Political power and stability. And you have made it to one of the endings. Whether this is a good ending or a bad ending is up to you because, I mean, if you're looking for land conquest, then there's uh, definitely a lot of better endings out there. But um, at least we've still retained our state, okay? There's some where, there are some endings where I've just completely vanished off the map, okay? So, you know, here we are. So, it seems that you want to choose to go to war. We get 100 political power and Serbia gets the event. Bulgaria ignores the ultimatum. There we go. We're at war with Serbia. Belgrade Pact is also going to be Greece, but I still feel like we have a fighting chance here. We do have enough political power to do some more, like, what are, uh, army command focus. Breakthrough plus 5%. Speed, I don't know about, oh, division attack and defense on core territory. Yeah. So now we've got a long war ahead of us. We just got to find ways to break through their front line and hopefully ours doesn't get broken through either. Pretty weak province right here. I know it's mountains, but I think that we could make it. We can make it through there. Ottomans on the move. Perhaps deciding our war against the Belgrade Pact presents an opportunity. Ottoman forces are assembling along our mutual border. It's difficult to say whether they will make a demand or simply invade, but we should be ready for e e either eventuality. 
Oh my gosh. No, I was genuinely okay with Serbia and Greece. You know, I feel like I could hold that, but now having to deal with the Ottomans, oh dear, that's a, that's a whole different story. Add like one more to this division, to this here, just because I'm not sure if we can handle the Greek forces right now. They're kind of beating us. And things were starting to look kind of scary. We were getting pushed back by the Greeks, the Ottomans were threatening to invade, and in Serbia, we weren't really making that much progress, despite the majority of our forces being on their border. Okay, we've pushed here. Uh, this tank division should be... Oh, I can't do it. Okay, what if we keep going? Yep, good. Okay, we're slowly pushing into... I don't know what the Ottomans are doing. The Ottomans have just stayed still, man. I'm actually gonna, like, get an army. I'm gonna take, like, half of these guys over. Because I... I don't know. <laughs> I ended up taking some divisions off the Ottoman front. Because the, the Ottomans weren't actually invading yet. But they were threatening to. And that is what I hate the most. Because if they do, and we take too many divisions off, we're screwed. That's gonna be an encirclement there. There's a huge portion of the army taken out. Half the Serbian army. We got some Romanian divisions there. Because I guess they're supporting them. There we go, we took them out, okay. A lot of our forces are back on the border. Is that like a time limit we have, or is this war just gonna go on for a while? That encirclement done, I was considering we could push into Serbia. Unfortunately, it was mostly Romanian divisions that we had destroyed, and they could just send more volunteers over. And as we neared closer to Belgrade, the resistance grew more and more tough. Come on, okay, we're outside Belgrade. What are the casualties? Surely they've taken so many more. We've taken 41k. 97 and 72. Jeez. Man. We've actually... Okay, we've taken Thessalonica. Nice. Maybe we can start pushing into Greece itself. I'd rather like... I'd prefer to go along the coast here because there's like no mountains. But again, there's a level 5 fort. Yeah, look at this. They're all down on organization now. They keep trying to push us back and they can't do it. They can't do it. We're too strong. We're too strong. I had given up on the Serbian front. We were too close to Belgrade and we couldn't push anymore, but the Greeks were now vulnerable. I thought, okay, if we can't push in Serbia, we're gonna go push through Greece, and it worked. There we go. Boom. Greece just capitulated. We got guns from that, much needed guns. Okay, and we have more civilian factories that's chucking on support equipment, and now these guys will be on the Serbian front. Now Serbia got no chance. And now it was just me and Serbia. Unfortunately, Serbia had built up their armed forces. Somehow, with the small, tiny amount of land that they have, they, they built it up quite a bit. I don't need this many troops on the border, probably. I'm probably, I'm probably like, harming myself. They, look at, I'm probably impeding my ability to conquest because there's so many troops that just don't have the supply, but... Oh, this doesn't even have railway connection. No, no, bro, what am I doing, man? Just connect it like that. There we go. Yeah, we should be getting a bit more supply. Should be okay. Yeah, we're completely fine on supply now. Now I think we just grab all our guys and attack Belgrade. There's no possible way this fails. Come on, we're so close to taking back Belgrade. We're so taking back. We're so close, so close to taking Belgrade. Come on. No, 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 no. Oh, this needs to hang on just for a little bit longer. Come on. If they get any of their dudes in there, it's back to like, it's back to like 80 can't allow it. We can't allow it. Oh dear. Unfortunately, Serbia was using the age-old tactic of cycling divisions in and out of Belgrade to prevent me taking it, and I could not pin the divisions walking into Belgrade for long enough to take it, right? That I would lose the attack, and then they just walk in, and then the attack on Belgrade would go back to like zero, and it was just so frustrating. I spent so long trying to take Belgrade. That's it. That's it. We're trying something different. That's it. I'm so finished. I'm so finished. We're trying something else. 93. 94, come on, please, 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 no, 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 don't you dare, don't you dare get another dude in there, don't you even think about it, for one minute second, God, oh my gosh, that took way too long, I'm actually, like, annoyed, I'm angry, like, I've become an angry man. But okay, so we won the Balkan War. Well done, you chose correctly. And I, you chose to put me through hell there, so that was your fault. We can strike at Romania. The conquest of Saloon. There we go. The liberals remain in power. Bypassed. Okay. There we go. We're at war. It's no longer filled. The liberals have remained in power. We can seize Thrace as well. The Ottomans are at, in a giant war. Now that we had won the Balkan War, we had so many options to take on the Ottomans that were already at war with the rest of the Middle East, or take on the Romanians. However, the Romanians are very strong, so I don't know about that. But yes, we're going to do something. We have a lot of options open to us. But we get a, we get the puppet, obviously. And that's all that's liberate. <laughs> that's hilarious. The fate of Greece. And, okay, we could liberate Greece as a republic. Liberate the Kingdom of Greece. Military occupation. 
And after fiddling around with all of the fate decisions, this is what we were left with. Um, we, uh, what I really want to do is I want to strike at the Ottomans. I want to seize Thrace. That could be an option. What do we think of Russia? I mean, I guess it's part of our focus. We do like Russia. You know what? Let's increase ties with Russia. There we go. See, we see how this turns out. With our supremacy restored over the Balkans, I wanted to find some big alliances. No, not a country like the Ottomans or a country like Serbia or Romania. I wanted to find some proper allies like Russia or Germany. What? The Russian Empire has declined? You're joking. There was so much potential between us, Russia. So much potential, and you've just gone and blown it away. I truly have no friends. An alliance offer from Albania. Now, I did say I was looking for allies, but do we need Albania as an ally, or do we have enough supremacy in the Balkans? I'm gonna leave this up to you guys. So you have decided that it is time for the younger faces to lead our country. Ivan Duchev becomes leader of the National Populist Party and we get 150 political power. Who the hell is this guy, man? Oh, crazy man. Okay, so he's young and, uh, legionary, legionism, legionaries, I don't know. Oh, Albania declared war on Serbia. All right, we'll see how they go. Serbia, will, oh, they got Greece on this, yeah, nice. So Albania, Albania will probably be taken out. Serbia is actually slowly pushing back Ilria. And they're only at war with Ilria. So I'm going to see how that plays out. It's going to be pretty interesting. Do uh, the Bulgarian race. So we lose 8,000 manpower, but we get uh, attack bonuses against certain countries and organization. But we lose, wait, we lose 1% recruitable pop. Oh, it's because we're like prioritizing our people over the other people. Okay. Will Hungary join the war against the... Dude, this is a crazy war on our border. This is crazy. I wonder what the Republic of Czechoslovakia, would they join? They wouldn't join the Belgrade Pact, would they? At this point in time, I was heavily considering justifying a war goal on Serbia because them being at war with Hungary and Austria now left a very easy way to take back, back our core lands. Like a quick justification, 20 days, and invade the Belgrade Pact. Alright, Bulgarian race is done. And the Czechs, oh, Czechoslovakia is being formed. They, they, they went to war and actually went over... Okay, cool. Um, it is 1939, meaning we can get some of this stuff. Our construction, so we can build more military factories faster. And we're going to deal with these guys. Oh! A Tartar proposition. Yeah, right, I don't care. Whatever. After we donated that one civilian factory, some guy won a seat in Parliament. I don't know, some some dude. I don't, I don't even know where he's from. In fact, we should trade for that. Oh! Gajaz Ishaki wins a seat, seat in Parliament. Oh, okay. And this Ashaki guy is causing us some issues in our government. He's making Tatar sympathy, which are like immigrants from somewhere. I don't know, but the the the, the government is losing popularity fast. Oh, Ivan Duchev's popularity polling lower. In recent wave of polls, questionnaires about the government. It appears that the popularity is trending way way lower than usual. Pressured Ivan Duchev to resign. Oh. I think we should resign. Yeah, I mean, I'm not letting you guys choose this one because I know exactly what's going to happen. Right, the successor. Gezek Ashaki, the guy, the old leader of Bulgaria has died and all sources point towards the newest leadership, influential Tatar activity. Gezek Ashaki, an unseen charm in his rhetoric, have propelled him to the forefront of Bulgarian politics. He is making his inauguration within the next few hours. Good luck. Oh, we've got Ashaki. We've got Ashaki in power. This guy, man. I don't even know where he's from. I don't even know who this guy is, but eh, here he is. Oh, the Russian Russian Empire. The Russian Empire invades. It invades Germany. Russian boots march west. Now that this Ashaki guy was in power, let's just say that he's going to carry Bulgaria to, uh, to great lengths. Opposition exterminated. More polls have arrived detailing the elimination of all opposing parties. Parliament is now entirely controlled by Ashaki, and there is no one who object him to taking total control. And that's just what Ashaki plans on doing, kicking everyone else off the boat and having full control over it himself. It is time. Kajaz and Sharki becomes the leader for the National Populist Party, be called Bulgaris. Zvenaru becomes a ruling party. National Populism, war sport, stability, political power game. What? What is that? Oh my god. Dude, we've got access to this focus tree now. The Bulgaris in Bulgaria. 
Oh my gosh. And you've made it, the Bulgarist path. I purposely made this path really hard to find, so if you manage to do all the correct decisions to lead up to this, I'm very, very, very surprised. Here we go, the Bulgaris in Bulgaria is done. Now we can, uh... Look at all this. Lay claim to the lands of old. Gains core. Oh my gosh, that is against Russia. Prepare the Bulgar Cossacks. Motorized defense and cavalry attack and motorized attack and mechanized and mechanized and... Dude, we're gonna be insane. What is like the last focus? I gotta see it. Oh, not yet though. Look at this. We get steel. That is so necessary. I need that. I need that right now. Essentially, this is the most overpowered focus tree in Bulgaria. We have claims to land all the way up to Kazan, all right? Through the Volga River in Russia. It's, 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 it's insane. The reclamation of these lands will show the world that Bulgar Bulgaria is not to be messed with. And as we have cause on uh, Ukraine. Ukraine are very strong. We can try and like attack them with Russia. We gotta get to we gotta get these guys first, then we have to attack Ukraine, and then we attack Russia. So now Ukraine and Russia were at war, but that really wasn't an issue for us because it would weaken both of them, right? So instead of having to declare war on one at a time, whoever wins, we could just declare war on them instead. With the Bulgars re-established as a culture and people, it is only logical we take what is ours. The Volga will run red with the blood of the Russians. Then it shall be washed over by the beautiful blue everyone knows. And thus, with the bleeding Volga shall the world know that we are indeed what we say we are. And reclaim our legacy we shall. 30 political- Come on, that speech was a bit more than 30 political power. Anyway, eliminate the uh, orthodox influence. Look at that, 12 steel. We lose a bunch of stuff, but it's fine. 12 steel, 12 tungsten. It's just, I mean, I need it. But before we take on Russia, we got to deal with Serbia and Greece and a few other countries. So let's just do, get them out the way. The war, retake core state. Boom, we should be really strong. Let's uh, start walking in. Uh, oh, they got dudes on our border already, but it won't be enough. There's no way. Look at this man. Don't even know how many divisions that was. Didn't even tell us, but there, there we go. Made it orthodox influence there. The first Khan, we get a uh, 15%. We have so much war support, man. Known as the, but the Bulgarian state will be known as the Khanate of the Bulgars. Two civilian factories. Hey, new name. Will we get a new flag? Maybe. Serbia capitulated. All right, now it is just. Uh, okay, well, we've got to make sure we still cover that front actually. But now, if we just we just got to capitulate uh, the Hellenic Republic, and then we're done. The first Khan. Look at this. The the, the lying down E is our flag now. Look look at this. The first Khan, the Bulgaria Bulgar Khanate. And there we go. We are officially the Bulgar Khanate. I don't even know what Khanate means. I I, I don't know. But we we're, it's cool. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, we don't have most of the war score core or not. Okay. Good. Can we get more. I would like a navy though. You know what? We're gonna take the Greek navy over that the rest of that land because. If we're going to enable them, we've got to make sure we can... Oh, we're running out of... Okay, yeah, that's what we can take. Okay, cool. We want to make sure that we can actually get supremacy, right? So now I wanted to justify and declare war on Romania. However, that was going to take 155 days, so I decided to make a little bit of a detour while I waited. I could, while I wait for the Romania war goal, quickly go to war with the Ottomans, but it's just getting across the Dardanelles, man. Just gonna... Imagine they say yes, I'll have to manually justify. Refused. Good. Declare war. Good. Alright, let's get these motorized straight across the Dardanelles. Let's get the, this motorized straight behind, and then we get these guys to pin, and these guys to pin, or just to conquer straight away. And taking out the Ottomans was absolutely no struggle, because you can see some of the focuses that we have, they are absolutely overpowered. I mean, it's like, it's like kind of a joke, where it's like we've created bioweapons, and then we instantly get like plus 100 organization with like a use of a drug or something. Just have a look. Nice incendiary warfare. Close air support. Division, ar armor division attack? 300 units of close air support is added to the national fox stockpile. Scientists discover new chemical. A hardworking scientist have finally showed us their work. It happens to be a new time of enhancement drug. More potent, uh oh. Implement use of the drug. This might give us more attention. Implement use. Replace medical with utilizing. Ha <laughs> Look at this man. Division speed plus 10%. Implement the use of the drug. Let's do it. Dude, this is, okay, this is funny. This is good. This is so good. More devastating than we originally expected. Incinerating everything in sight. Heffling the land. Our new weapons will bring nothing but terror for the enemy on the battlefield. We, well, at least they work. What do you mean? No, but, well, at least they work. They're <laughs> Alright, we're ready to go. Here we go. Now check them on extra aggressive. Oh. No, we're not starting an exercise. Boom. Extra aggressive. The Ottomans would be very quick to capitulate with our incendiary weapons and our drugged up soldiers. They would stand no chance because, I mean, I guess we're just too powerful. 
Intentions of Restoration. He is supposed to, supposed to be Bulgaris. So time to reveal the real the no nature of Bulgarism. And we'll bring back Volga by force. Claim on a bunch of places. Slow. Treaty of... We have worn down the Ottoman resistance. They want... Uh, white peace. No. No, 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 no. They, they, they thought they could just get away with that. Come on, man. There we go. They capitulated. And like a menace on the loose, after annexing the Ottoman land, not even, not even liberating them, just straight up military occupying them, we would now go to war with Romania instantly. Oh, so it should be an easy invasion of Romania here. Very easy invasion. Oh, Imagine it all goes red. About that wildlife protection. We are really, you know, we actually are really all about wildlife protection. You know, there's not much, you may not know much about, uh, the Bulgar Carnets, but we're actually very pro wildlife protectionism, you know? Manpower. We'll have no issues, manpower. Cool, and let's select all. Look at this. Fate of Romania. Military occupation. We need the we need the Bulgarias to connect, obviously. There's only only one way this can work. We need the Bulgaria land and then the Bulgar land all to connect. Is this the where's the Volga River? This is the Volga River, right? Yeah. This one, yeah. I, I think I remember because Stalingrad sat on the B Volga River. And now there was only one enemy left. Unfortunately, it would be the most difficult enemy of all, Russia. We just got a did we just get a core somewhere? Let's look at our cores and claims. Oh yeah. What is the green? Claim, claim. So this is our... Okay, but we're going to own all of this. And then this as well. If, will this uh, war goal run out? No, it won't. Okay. I'm going to wait. I was very hesitant in attacking Russia straight away. Because I had a lot of manpower. It just wasn't mobilizing as quickly as I would like. I was getting like a thousand manpower a week. And like, I, I had all the manpower. But it just, it wouldn't mobilize. So I couldn't have it on the, on the army. I had to wait until I could get it all. So while I was waiting, Russia actually went to war with the Austrians and the hung Hungarians. Right? So they completely destroyed them, obviously. So now we've got uh, Transylvania on our border. Which is a Russian puppet. And also Greece joined the Moscow Accord somehow I don't know how they just did all right what are they gonna do Czechoslovakia joined yeah they all joined yada yada okay can we have we have we at war Greece no not right now we will with them no should I push I want to try maybe push past at least like to here you know finally Straight into Athens, I don't care. And then you guys straight cut off that and go into here. Now I was going to quickly take out Greece and take out all of the uh, Transylvania area and Czechoslovakia. And I was hoping Germany would also help me out. What in the world? I'll never understand. I'll never understand this stupid game, man. I'll never understand. How has this even happened? It's because of the way this impassable terrain is, it doesn't automatically generate a front line sometimes. And you just gotta have just, I guess, gaps open so you can get encircled. Yeah, it, it's great. Can Germany declare war on Poland, please? Oh my god, they just did it. I was literally just like, yo, can Germany declare war on Poland? But they did, and Poland are in the Warsaw... Oh, sorry, Moscow Accord. I almost called it the Warsaw Pact. Can you believe that? But yeah, look at that. Beautiful. So there we go, full of Warsaw. There we go, look at this. We have 24 war score. We couldn't get any of it. Yeah, okay, good. So Czechoslovakia are going to capitulate. Finally, Germany attacked Poland. It took uh, way too long, but it happened. And now they would take out Czechoslovakia, Transylvania, Hungary, and hopefully join me in my conquest of Russia. Forever. Can we get? Can we attack? I want to see if we can get through the Caucasus. We should be able to. I'm going to push. All right, we, I think we can. Yeah, I think we've. I think we've been able to for a while, but I just, just don't trust it. Because now Germany is fighting them. And they're winning. They're going to have to take divisions off me. And probably off this front against Japan as well. I'm unsure if I forgot to mention this, but Russia has been at war with Japan this entire time as well. So me, Germany, and Japan. I think things are going to go well for us now. Oh, Transylvania capitulated. Good. Man, why would it not just be from... Why would they not do it from... Why are they doing it from there, man? Just do it from here. Like that. That's all I ask, man. After about an hour of screaming at my computer, Russia was finally on the brink of collapse, and we would uh, take all the lands that we lay claim to. Can this one man get to Archangel before this army group gets to Moscow? Oh. Oh, okay, never mind. Okay, cool. 
Now, for the entirety of this peace conference, I was checking every single state for what cause or claims that we had, all right? I didn't want to select a state that we didn't have any cause or claims on because it would be kind of strange, right? I just wanted to get those states and any lands that connected our lands to the Volga River. So basically, I just wanted a swimming pool in the, in the Black Sea, you could say. And there it is, the Bulgarian Carnet ending. Probably the best ending, in my opinion. So you have chosen, no we have no choice, give in to their demands, we lose 200 political power. And uh, well, there we go, that is the result <laughs> of your choice. But don't worry, not all is lost. There are ways where we can become greater than we ever were before, and there are paths where we can fall into a downward spiral. Factories we lost, man, we don't even have a dockyard anymore. Oh, it's rough, man, it's rough. And now we have a new decision with four options. The political question. Following the outrageous surrender of all our land gains made during the Golden Age without even a fight, Bulgaria has been engulfed by fury and protests. Whoever wins shall have a rocky road ahead of them. That much is certain. The Zveno is also plotting in the shadows, and they might take the opportunity to coup our government. In any case, the party that has come out on top is... Okay, so you have chosen that the absolutionists are taking control. There we go, absolutionist coup. It seems as though the policy of our party to work towards re-strengthening and rebuilding the Bulgarian state has not been enough against our will. We have been forced out of the government, made to give up power against our will. How could this be? We lose 125 political power, we lose a bunch of stability, paternal autocracy goes up, Boris stops being a field marshal, and uh... Oh dear, here we are. We are now the Tsardom of Bulgaria. Bo uh, Boris is uh, at the top here. And wow, that means we should have access to this focus tree. The absolutionists take power. Look at this. So now the absolutionists are in full control. Boris is now the head of state and the king. We need some authority in this country. That's what we needed. Okay, we're going to expand the Tsar's powers. Get 5% stability for like 60 days. I don't know what the point of that is, but yeah. All right, we got it. And my fan is going crazy. I think having a bunch of save games <laughs> isn't good for the computer. Serbia declared war on Illyria. All right, well, we'll see how this goes. Bend in the army, we get stability. You know what? We are paternal autocrats. We are the Tsardom of Bulgaria. It would make sense to just straight up. Oh, we can, oh, whoa, look at this. Oh, we're about to get rid of it. Hey, we can send in the army. Okay, now we can finally get rid of Black Monday. Good. Now, as Serbia declared war on Illyria, I had an idea. We would make friends with Germany and try and reclaim our lands that we had only uh, like a year ago. Not even a year ago. I forgot. It was a while ago. More Tatar immigrants. The Germ Germany's... Okay, cool. Uh, Germany's accepted our offer. There we go. Give German Empire military access. Enact a non-aggression pact. Hey, look at this. We don't hate each other. Oh, wow, they really like us. We really like them. Third, a toast to our German friends. Okay, a Tatar proposition. What is this, man? I wish you could make donations or how frivolous. I guess we can remove one civilian factory. I'd rather not. No, I'm not doing that. Now that we were in the Reich's Pact and the Germans were on our side, there was no possible way that we could lose the Balkan War once we restart it. It's 85 days, good. All right, Serbia, we're coming to declare war on you. In Greece, watch out. Empower the Council of Ministers, cool. Boom. Hey, okay, let's start walking in. Now that we've just started the war, it's looking very good. I mean, Ilria are pushing back Serbia a tiny bit, and they're also pushing from Hungary. Uh, we're pushing from Serbia, and we're holding against Greece. So things are looking good so far. And then France declared war on Germany. Oh, there we go. The world is at war again. All right, Germany is going to worry about other fronts now. So yeah, things ain't looking good. Oh, okay. We just got to say Skopje. It's our final hope. Suppress the Agrigarians. Protect the Balkan people. Empire declared war on the Confederation of the Caucasus. Oh, there we go. Russia's declaring war on Germany now. There we go. Get in there. Go. Why are they so slow? Okay, cool. They are 100. Serbia's capitulated. With Serbia out of the picture, now I just had to deal with Greece, and uh, hopefully things wouldn't go wrong. Oh my... What? Since when did this happen? No, 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 no. Oh my gosh, I didn't even see this. 
and with one fateful mistake, Sofia was occupied by Serbia. I thought Serbia was done, was finished, Ilrians would have uh, destroyed all of their divisions, but no, they, they came back and they somehow are pushing into our country. Hey, we're about to take Sofia back, so we... You're joking. That isn't going to us. And the greatest betrayal of all, Illyrians seized our capital, not letting us occupy the, our own capital, and now our surrender score was way higher than it should have been, and our troops couldn't get across, and it was just a disaster. There we go. Alright, we lost. And there we are, we've made it to one of the endings. Uh, not a good one, no, this was definitely a very bad ending. You have chosen the Broad Socialists. So we get Boris III, the leader of the Social Democrats Party, Social Democracy, yada yada. Uh, they become ruling party, and uh, public elections will not be held at rebuilding the state. All right, Broad Socialists. So now we have access to this focus tree, and this focus tree is very similar to the Radical Democrats focus tree over here. We just get a uh, more more socialism stuff. Yes, however, the king is not very happy with the broad socialists being in power, and he will attempt to launch a coup, and whether this coup is successful or not is up to you. Take the fight to unemployment. Cool. So now we got these decisions. Construct arms. Civilian factory. Yeah, it's good. I'll take it. Okay. Wizen, the Bulgarian National Bank. Rumblings of dissent. Here we go. Here's a new decision. While the new government has been busy establishing order, there have been rumblings of dissent from the powers that be. In this period of instability, it would be easy for another determined group to seize power. The absolutionists take control or let the government live on. You have chosen the Zveno. Here we go. Change in popularity of national populism, 10%. Zveno becomes the ruling party. There he is. Look at him. Come on, Georgiev Staniov or something. I don't know. Focus tree available to us here. We can do lots of lots of things here, which is a couple more decisions coming up then. This is going to be a long video for me to make. Now we've got radicals in charge. I can promise you people were not happy about this or going down without a fight. So now we've got access to this new focus tree. And with radicalism comes a lot of risk. Isn't that part... That's part of the uh, Dono D Donau area bund. I don't know how to say it, but yeah, interesting. Now, there are two parties inside of the Zveno. One are complete fascists, and the other are the opposite, complete totalists. Only one can lead the country, though, and you must choose who sh it shall be. Leadership question. After we took power, our movements started to become less and less united, and two main factions emerged. Okay, here we are. Leadership question. Although our grip on the country was complete, divisions began to appear with Zveno itself. A tense vote was held today, and the winner is about to be announced. Who shall lead us? Okay, so we are accepting the alliance. Good. So that now means... We are, uh, oh, I don't know what that does, but we are now we're just guaranteeing the independence of each other. And as Bulgaria signed the pact with Albania, the Balkan supremacy would never be questioned again. With the Fourth Balkan War resulting in a Bulgarian victory, the future of Bulgaria would be nothing but assured. <laughs> So you have chosen the Radical Democrats. Boris III becomes leader for the market liberals, change in popularity of market liberalism, and uh, add rebuilding the state. Interesting, okay, Radical Democrats. We are officially just Bulgaria with Boris III. Brilliant, cool. Oh, here. Oh, we have Radical Democrats, Broad Socialists is part of the similar, similar, this is like demo democratic. And as you guys are going to figure out, the path to democracy would be nothing but rough, but we could make it through if you make the right decisions. So this is the guy in power. So this is like the king. And then this is just the guy in, in power. Uh, if the fight to unemployment, why is in the bank? This is all good stuff, man. This is all good stuff. Getting towards... And removing Black Monday, so, you know, we're, we're gonna get all this stuff. Unfortunately, not everyone is happy with a democracy, and it turns out Boris is uh, very unhappy about it, and there is there are rumblings of dissent, you could say. Rumblings of dissent? 
Ooh, what's going on? The Absolutionists are taking control. Gets event Absolutionist Coup. Which one do we do? The Absolutionists are taking control or the government lives on? So you have decided that we need to stay true to our principles. We get 5% stability and the Totalist party will now be called Sveno. Totalists will join the coalition. There we go. Let's uh, select that one. Brilliant. There we are. Zveno, Totalist. No, not Totalist. Sorry. National Populist still. Good. We have so much political power from that. I think we're just going to use it on our army. There we go. Artillery barrage and... Staying true to our principles is very important, and we must stay true to the principle of uniting the Bulgarian people under the same lands. That includes the lands that were taken from us in Serbia and Greece. Once the Ottomans had finally finished up with their little insurgents in the Arab countries, I, I weren't worried about them. Land. Get our land back that we conceded to them. So let's start justifying on Serbia. You know, they take 20 days, which is, uh, which is uh, the good thing. I mean, 20 days ain't long. And just like that, we declared war on Serbia, immediately bringing Greece and Albania into the war, and we began marching west. While most of the Serbian and Greek army were up against Ilria and Austria and Hungary, defending that border, we would come in from behind and try and encircle. Oh, Serbia just capitulated. I did not expect... I thought they were a while away. Okay, we must have just got... They must have oh, they just lost Belgrade or something. Oh, all right, good. Let's take him out. And with only Greece left to defend itself against the forces of Austria, Hungary, and the pact that they have in my forces, they would crumble very quickly. 96, 97. Okay, it's gonna. We're gonna finally gonna take Athens. There we go. That's the end. Ah, that's nice. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our cause. I wish it would tell us which ones are our cause here. We could just imagine it had in brackets like cause, and you could just select it. Like imagine they were our cause. That'd be so much better, you know. It's, it's be good. Alright, that's it. I'm done. I'm taking Navy. Good. Alright, now let's take over here. The Bulgarians stay here. Okay. Now, this is a mighty Bulgaria, right? This is a beautifully sized Bulgaria. I'm happy with this Bulgaria. We can look at our cause and claims. Alright, we encompass it all. We occupy. We even occupy some areas we don't need to occupy. Look at that. Look at that. Alright, so it is time to preserve our Bulgaria. There we go, it'd be tempting to embark on glorious wars to regain our lost lands, but we, well, we have, but however, this would mean more blood and death among our already battered people. I mean, we've already kind of regained our lost lands. And now our Bulgarian people were united together, we would stop there. We would not go too far like some other people in history, in real life, <laughs> I'm sorry, we would not go too far and be happy and be free and whatever. <laughs> So you have decided to aid the Germans. Gets event, alliance with Bulgaria. I swear to God, if they say no. Apparently the German Empire have decided to accept our offer. A toast to our German friends. We join the Reich's Pact, putting us at war with the uh, Hellenic Republic. Yes, the Hellenic Republic. But first, let's get a uh, military high command and just do like artillery things. Okay. Join wars. Now, just like World War One, we are allied with the Ottoman Empire and at war with Greece and uh, Russia. And now I also want to be at war with Serbia because, you know, they've got our land. I want to take it back. Justifying against Flume. You know what? We might as well justify on Serbia. We might as well do it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Just call allies. Boom. War with Serbia. We can march in straight away, hopefully. Okay. The, Bulga the Belgrade Pact takes on Bulgaria. I think it's the other way round. We are taking on the Belgrade Pact. It's not really the Belgrade Pact, but it's, you know, the remnants of the Belgrade Pact. As you can see, we had quite a quick start to the Serbian campaign, pushing through their front lines pretty easily and uh, eventually encircling a lot of divisions, separating Serbia from Greece while cutting, cutting them off at Albania, which was pretty good. Oh, they're leaving, but we don't allow it. We don't allow them to leave. And there it is. And that everyone, that is how you do an encirclement, just in case you uh, weren't aware. That's how you do it. Crudal population factor. There we go. Expanding reserves with a military with a state. Are we really a military with a state? I thought we were a democracy. You know what? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. We can be both. With our manpower pool replenished and this breakthrough in Serbia, morale was high and nothing could stop us. And especially because we're allied with the Germans. And you know, the Germans, hey, they're pretty strong. Beyond. Yeah, Germany's just holding. Whoa. German invasion of Britain? 
Since when? All right, let's go. Serbia should capitulate. Peace conference. Guns and everything we could possibly imagine. With the capitulation of Serbia, it left us and only us to decide the fate of the Balkans. And I decided to make a bunch of puppet states. Croatia, Bosnia, Montenegro, Slovenia. You know, all of them are our puppets now, which is uh, pretty cool. You know, the Balkans are, are, are normal. Average Balkans. Serb Serbia is a bit small, but eh, it doesn't matter. At this point, I decided to check on the German invasion of England, and well, it was going well. I'd say they invaded more than England because they completely liberated Scotland by the looks of it. And mainland Germany was pushing into France as well, and if we could knock out the Third International early here, Russia would be the only enemy left. And it would not be long, because only a month later, this is what England looks like. The fall of Paris. There we go. Alright, it's gonna be over. I'm not looking through all that. No way. <laughs> they gotta have it. That is a slither of land. Okay, it's done, right? Oh! It is, and of course we got zero points for this because we did not really fight the third international. So Germany was nice enough to give the United Kingdom and the Entente back their land or back their homeland, but uh, France was not so lucky. Germany just decided to create their own puppet state of France, so it was still not on the mainland. What in the world? The Netherlands are, the Netherlands invaded below. Oh yeah, let's go. Okay, Greece is, the Hellenic Republic is already 95. Mia, yeah. something like that, I don't know. That's 100. Hey, now look at all the divisions trapped. Uh-oh, guys. Once I dealt with the encircled troops in Greece, I made sure I fortified my Ottoman border. Well, not fortified, I just put a couple of divisions across the Dardanelles and Constantinople, just in case the Ottomans capitulated, because they were doing a pretty, they were having a rough time against the Russians there. And then I put my army in Crimea, thinking I could push. Nope. I'm big time. We're not getting pushed back, are we? Imagine we get pushed back. We are... Struggling a bit. Now there was only one thing that could happen to make this game end sorta quickly, because Ukraine was not at war with Russia right now. In order to widen the front, well, we would need Ukraine to be at war, and uh, well, a miracle happened. Oh, there we go. It, it happened. I did not expect it to happen. It happened. I was gonna, I was gonna stop, but no. Ukraine actually declared war on Russia. This is huge news. Now, with the newly combined forces of Ukraine and mine, we were pushing Russia back pretty comprehensively. Yeah, it was happening pretty fast now. We're helping us Rostov. That's 97, 98. Yeah, okay, we did it. Good. Oh, look at this whole front line attack. Okay, it's over. And after a little bit of walking away from the computer, but letting the game run so we can wait for Russia to capitulate, I finally came back to a capitulated Russia. 100. Done. Oh my gosh. Okay, we have some points, man. We have some points. Uh... Now in the peace conference, I took all of the Greek lands and also decided that Central Asia would be a part of our, our, our lands for some reason. I mean, I didn't know what to get. I had to pick something. So Central Asia it is. That is a weird peace conference. You know, Central Asia, we're going to liberate it. Now see, these are all our puppets now, but they're like independent in that. We can return Russian lands. Yeah, let's do that. And now we had won World War II, just like we had won World War I, with a victory over the Russians and the Third International. So you have decided that the broad socialist government under this man lives on. Okay, so no absolutionists taking control. It's a uh that's uh it's good apparently this decision that you've made has led countries to do a lot of weird things and we had russia joining the reichs pact and uh, we had romania forming a federation with rhodesia with a british water watermark on the flag I'm very confused let's uh cooperate with the bourgeoisie and we lose 50 political power what a great focus love that beautiful stuff man whoa german bohemia is coming through here that's interesting. Okay, we can seek new alliances and try and get an alliance with the Austrians. Let's improve relations with them and then do seek new alliances because I believe that's something we can do. Yeah, here. 60 political power and we can do it. Alliance with Bulgaria. Hey. Remove rebuilding the state. And we get an extra 10% stability on top of the 100. I don't know if it actually adds up like that, but just like keeps it at 100. And if we lose it, it stays at 100. I don't know, but we'll see. And with one cheeky improve relations button, we were able to get the Austrian opinion of us up to 176 before we requested the alliance. <laughs> oh, there we go. The Tempalic order, uh, order of Austro-Aryans have, have accepted. Wonderful news has just arrived from the Bulgarian delegation. There we go. A toast to our Austrian friends. You know, let's just ignore the fact that we're a democracy and Austria is a uh, fascist or national populist because, you know what? Doesn't matter. It's Kaiser Redux. Who cares? They don't even see it coming. Beautiful. In we go. 
You see, Serbia and Greece were not expecting me to have an alliance with Austria, so a surprise invasion from my borders uh, made Greece capitulate very quickly. However, Serbia decided they wanted to hang on for a while. We did it, finally, 100%. Oh my gosh. We can return the Serbian and Greek lands, but at the end of the day, man... Like, it's just this and this. Uh, no thank you. I'm gonna keep it. Despite everything I just said, I did end up transferring land to Greece just because I couldn't be bothered dealing with the occupation. And now there was a new faction we had to worry about. Oh! Federation of Ro- Oh, Romania's doing something. They've joined a faction. Polish Intermarium. Uh-oh. And these guys are all at war with Ukraine. This alliance was one big coalition against Ukraine, and uh, we kind of like Ukraine right now, so I think we might get involved. What? What? They were... These guys were in the Reichs Pact. They've betrayed Germany. They've betrayed Germany, that's crazy. We could go to war with the third inter Intermanium and ensure Ukraine is okay. Right? Intervene on the side of Ukraine? Essentially, all of our leaders sat around the big red table. Austria said, I don't like Czechoslovakia. They had an independence war against us. We need to stop that. I said, I don't like Romania, all right? Romania want to take our lands. I'd rather just have them gone completely. And uh, everyone else said, Polish sucks. It's socialist. So we decided to intervene on the side of Ukraine. Unfortunately, Poland capitulated Ukraine before we could do anything. So they actually had joined the Polish Intermarium as well. And then Russia declared war on them. So technically, we were on the side of Russia. Oh, Russia declared war- Oh, Russia declared war on the Inter Intermarium faction. Hey, would you look at that? But Romania, cool allies, boom. There we go, we are off. In fact, we're not the only ones pushing, there we go. And now the combined forces of Austria and Russia were too much for this annoying faction, so we dealt with them pretty quickly, and then, uh, well, it was kind of a mess afterwards, but yeah, you'll see. Okay, that'll be it, right? That should be it, that should be it. Hey, there we go! Okay, that's the peace zone. I will just take all the land close to us. That's uh, pretty much all of Romania. Okay, that'll do. I don't care anymore. Beautiful. Bulgaria has... Wow. Yep, look at look at Bulgaria now. We're, we're too strong. Uh, Bukovina and Bessarabia. We can. What are we going to do with Bessarabia? Liberate a greater Moldova. You know what? Let's do it. And what are we going to do with uh, Bukovina? Oh, uh, give it to Wallachia. Where they- what is Wallachia? Alright, there you go. Well, they have it. Oh! This guy is back, man! And with even greater dominance over the Balkan restored by Bulgaria, even with the help from the Austrians, this would come to an end, with our ending of Balkan dominance with Austria. Okay, so you have chosen Hristo Lukov, and he becomes the leader for the National Populist Party. Interesting. Okay, we've got this. Look at him. Oh, he's just... Oh, he looks like a military guy. Yeah, I think probably, yeah, he would be a military guy. I don't know why I would be surprised by that. But now we go down the right part of this focus tree, and we're going to try and proclaim the Third Empire. Well, we're going to try, at least. Get rid of Tsar Boris. This guy doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, let's do this. We change popularity of... Of all that. Okay, let's go. Finish the anti-Bulgaria. And now we get another proposition. The Finnish and the anti-Bulgaria focus tells us that the leader actually has a brother who we can invite. Oh, okay. Here we go. The fate of the monarchy. Kov will has announced that he will make a speech on the radio tonight. The content of the announcement he will make is up to him. Our move is Republican at its core or send an invitation to the prince. Okay, so you have decided Kimon Georgiev is our rightful leader, and we get 5% stability from that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so we are still National Populist Zveno. We are going to do the Bulgarian culture. Look at this. Political power gain, recruited population, 15% stability. That'll get us to 100, and then 5,000 manpower for some reason. No, no, just, hey, I'm complaining. I ain't complaining. Hungary declared war on Austria, declared war on the Czech Republic. The Czech Republic's free, man. Look at that. Negative 20% stability. It actually, it's not that bad. It's just the oh, Albania declared war on Serbia. Oh, Serbia might lose to Illyria here. 
but they've got Greece on the side as well. So we'll see what happens. Now, as you guys probably know, you picked the leader who is actually the totalist representative of Bulgaria, right? And we are currently national populist. So there is important question we have to ask. Do we actually switch to totalism or do we stay national populist? There's no way they haven't surrendered. Okay, here we go, the totalism question. There we have it. The new totalist ideology is undoubtedly one of the most fascinating human inventions in the 20th century. Many think uh, Georgiev has only formed an alliance and does not intend to change the official ideology of Zveno. Only Georgiev himself has the true answer and the members of our party are willing to wait for it. There we go. We can either choose to stay true to our principles and keep the uh, national populist ideology with totalists just joining the coalition, or we could do totalism is the future and then we get a new totalist uh, ideology bracket. We, can't, we go all the way from here, we go all the way up here. It's <laughs> crazy stuff. Anyway, make the decision. So you have decided that our movement is Republican at its core. That gives us 50 political power. So, you know, it's uh, not to dismiss. There's a lot of political power. Anyway, it's not that much. Really. Anyway, let's uh, finish the anti-Bulgaria over here. God, there is a dog outside and it's barking. Okay, it stopped. Anyway, we're going to get Chief of Army. Uh, attack and defense on core territory is really good. Because we, like, core territory is all around us. Like... These are all cores, right? I mean, not that one, that one there. So, I mean, it's always good for the offense as well. And lucky you guys get another decision to make because the guy leading our country, he's getting a bit old. He's getting a bit crazy. I don't know, he might do some wild things. So uh, people are asking, hey, let's get some younger dude in. Maybe we'll have a better country run. I mean, you'll see. Oh, yo, what's going on? Lukov's support base is known to be very radical. The members of this radical wing have often been young Bulgarian men who had listened to the war stories of their fathers, veterans of the Weltkrieg, which developed them in a way a very strong nationalist feeling of great xenophobia. Asking Lukov to resign and name Duchev as his successor, Lukov can now either accept the request or preserve his position and drape these young men in order. So we can choose, I haven't done my time yet and Lukov stays in power. Or, it is time for younger faces to lead our country. Ivan Duchev becomes leader for the National Populist Party. Uh-oh. Okay, so you have decided that you're going to reject the offer. Now we do not need Albania, okay? We can rule the Balkans just fine. Albania is a tiny country. We could just t take them, take over them if, if we wanted to. Oh, we get the Polish-Ukraine war. Interesting. Philipp what does the co-prosperity sphere looking like? Apparently it's got the Philippines in it. It's, oh, that's the guy who's... Wait, that's the guy who's a puppet of America. Now, I wanted to secure my Ottoman border. Remember, they were looking to attack us during that Balkan War. They were threatening in of invasion, and that was pretty scary. So they're a threat, and we need to strike them before they strike us. And there is one way we can do that. We can send an ultimatum to demand Thrace. What course of action will we take? There's only one option. Declare war on them. There it is. War with the Ottomans. They can't handle a war with us. We are doing to them exactly what they were doing to us. Because remember, they were going to invade us, but now we are invading them while they have their Arab Spring or whatever it's called. I don't know, some Arab revolution. Anyway, a quick, in a quick invasion across the Dardanelles works just fine. And we're already into Ottoman mainland. Oh, there we go. The, uh, the, the World Creek, the second, the second World War II started. Uh, Russia will probably join soon. We've got the third international against the Germans right now. Um, I don't see myself allying with the Germans, really. I just see myself, you know... Oh, we should probably connect this railway. That'd be a good idea. Oh, here we go. Russia intervenes. Russia is here. Russia is against Germany. Russia was finally in the Second World War, but that didn't bother us because we were more focused on encircling and taking out Constantinople. Eventually, the major city would fall to us. After our divisions had spent enough time wandering around the Anatolian desert, the Ottomans finally decided to give up. Anatolia. Allow the formation of a new Turkish Republic. Military occupation is the only answer. So Anatolia is, uh, is like this. I oh know Anatolia is like this part, right? It's not going to include like Istanbul. It better not. But we're going to make a, a new Turkish Republic. Hopefully it's over here. Okay, good, 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 good. Oh, things are there. It's going to be good map. Good borders here. It's about to happen. War with the Turks over now. It is time to stand down. 
preparations along our mutual border. There we go. Can we move our capital? You know, having a capital in Constantinople for one of the past would have been nice, but unfortunately that does not happen. I mean, I don't think we can actually change capitals in this mod. Uh, they should uh, they should do it. Now, the next country in line for an invasion was Romania, and I sp we didn't have any manpower, so I spent the whole time, like a long time, looking through the focus tree, trying to find focuses to give us manpower. Dude, Romania's at war with Ukraine. Dude. That means they have less dudes on our border. And there it is, the perfect chance has presented itself, but I didn't want to wait too long, otherwise Ukraine would take all of the war score, you know, you can't have that. That's so true. I've just declared war on them. I don't, I can't even see how many units they got, but... Are they gonna attack me? Okay, they're not attacking me, so that means we are definitely stronger than them. So and with flawless logic like that, you can't really go wrong, so I immediately started attacking them. Fortunately, my logic was accurate, and uh, we managed to pull off some pretty good encirclements. How do we- wait, when did we get that? There we go, the Federation of Rhodesia has capitulated. Now we could go help Poland. Sorry, help out against Poland. In fact, I am gonna do that. No, Poland were actually so far away and they really weren't that much of a threat to us, so I immediately withdrew my forces and sent them back home. But luckily, just in time, I sent them back home because Kurdistan had an uprising and we had to go deal with that in Turkey. Oh, that was annoying. That was really annoying. Perfect. Alright, there we go. Turkey, you can have it. Brilliant, cool. I'm not dealing with that. With that. All right, our forces are back here. Look at this, Bulgarian hegemony. We're just sitting around maintaining uprisings. Anyway, you can tell by the sound of my voice and the enthusiasm I have behind it that I haven't been playing Hoi 4 for five hours at all. No, I have. Anyway, there we have it. Balkan supremacy, dominance, hegemony, whatever you want to call it. decided that the government lives on okay here we are no the uh republic lives on it's not really a republic is it a republic i don't know we're not no we're not a republic because it's a leader a king here yes of course i know my stuff i know my stuff trust me at least we get this modified black monday and we gets a little bit better but not really that much for a while here, I was just sitting around waiting for the game to, you know, keep going. And, you know, I was building up my nation at the same time. But sometimes in Hearts of Iron 4, you just got to do that. You just got to sit around and wait for something to happen. I did send volunteers to Ilria, but that was pretty much the only notable thing that happened for, like, a few months. And so now we have some decisions based on uh, reconciling reconciling with people, like Serbia, the Romania. You know, we could, I think Romania is probably the best option right now. Unfortunately, every time I tried to press the reconcile button, it just disappeared. It's like it didn't even exist. I think it's because all of our countries are negative 200 opinion of us, so uh, it's, it's not good. The central government, or even the Tsar himself, we must allow the needs of people from every corner of the country to be heard so that we can better address their concerns and, in time, help them address their own concerns as well. Bulgaria should be a democratic nation. I already said that. Okay, look at this. We got a research speed, income tax, and uh, seek new alliances. You know what, let's let's seek new alliances. You know, it sounds like a uh, good idea. I wanna get that done. But you know, seeking alliances in this kind of atmosphere is absolutely disastrous. Everybody hates us. No one likes us. We're all hated by all of our borders. Ottoman Empire just joined the Reich's Pact. Holy. They're, they're so weak though. And they've got all this in the Reich's Pact too. So Ottomans joining the Reich's Pact is very big news for us, alright? We've got to avoid them. I'm not trying to go to war with Germany. And uh, Austria also denied our faction request. So that's also a great thing to happen. Everyone, uh, we're literally very lonely. We've got no friends. We're so lonely. A lonely democracy. Have you ever seen a lonely democracy? No. No, you haven't seen a lonely democracy. Everyone, what could have I done? There's some privileges high enough. Oh, Romanian-Ukrainian war. That's odd nation with the Tsar serving as a unifier for the Bulgarian people the future seems optimistic long live the Bulgarian people 10% stability we don't even we already got 100 but we removed rebuilding the state so you know it's not too bad we were now officially the most liberal country in the Balkans can you believe it it's a, quite an achievement to be the most liberal country in the Balkans yep 100% anyway the second world krieg would begin and our place and our side would be undecided that is up for you to decide Oh, Russian boots march west to Germany. Russia is seemingly recovering. They declare war on the Caucasus and yeah, pretty much 
all of that, except they don't really have a way to get into Germany because Lithuania isn't... Oh no, never mind, they are. I'm, I'm tripping. Ignore everything I just said. Now at this point, I started thinking about invading the Belgrade Pact and Serbia, but at this point, I thought it would be too late. They're currently... Are they gonna, they're gonna win the war and then we're gonna be so screwed. Yeah, that's so true. I'm gonna take Zagreb any second and that's the end. Like, if we look at the current wars here... And if we uh, find the war that we're looking for, the Ilria and Serbia war. Anything that says uh, here. Yeah, they're 76. Serbia won the war. Okay, great. What I want to focus on is getting back our lands from Serbia, Hellenic Republic, and maybe we, you know, help out, well, take out Romania. Help with these guys. Now, in my decisions tab, there is a button that allows me to enter World War II. But however, there was a decision we have to make which side would we enter on? Of course the Third International would be, be ruled out. We would never join the Socialist side, but Russia or Germany? Declare war and join the Second World Krieg. Here we go. It seems as though the Second World Krieg, a war that many inter um, international observers and even participants have predicted to be the biggest conflict ever seen in Europe. Here we go. Okay, so we can either aid with the Germans and... Uh, Greece becomes our enemy. We can side with the Russians, meaning we join the Moscow Accord, we go against the Reich's Pact, and we go to war with the Ottomans. Okay, so you've decided that he uh, hasn't done his time yet. So we have 2% of stability out of um, him staying in power, which is, you know, it's not too bad, I guess. And, uh, yeah, we'll just continue as we were. Yeah, but rumors are saying that this guy with his age is uh, going a bit crazy. It's, it's just a rumor. Don't take it too seriously. Yet they ceded the entire land. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's going to be Iraq. Probably, or is, it, is Iran just going to occupy? Yeah, there we go. There's Iraq. Well, uh, it turns out this guy, he's overly ambitious. The guy in, in power right now. He's Because he's crazy old. He's doing all these crazy things. He decided to declare war on all of the countries around us. This man believes that the Bulgarian race is superior for some reason, and that by declaring war on all of the countries around him, it would result in an astounding victory for the Bulgarians because of the Bulgarian spirit and the Aryan race of the Bulgarians. I don't think I can even say Aryans in this situation. But it goes, okay, just imagine. The Bulgarian spirit. Yes, it is within the Bulgarian people. Oh, what happened to... Okay, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what's happening over there. It is within the Bulgarian people. If they do not believe that they can win, then then we shall lose, okay? So you better believe that we can win. Otherwise, yeah, it's over. That's some Mao Zedong logic right there. You might... The belief. It's only the belief that matters. Oh, dear. Oh, we've just lost our capital. Oh, how are we going to defend... Okay, this is this is my plan, right? This was the trap. I, more Okay, more immigrants. No one cares. This was, this was the trap, right? They get into Sofia, then we encircle them, and yeah. Now, as you can imagine, the other party leaders were not very happy. They were determined to remove this guy from power, and they would all do it in their own way, and eventually leading into a multi-level civil war for Bulgaria. Okay, so you have chosen side with the Russians. Okay, let me get the elephant out of the room, okay? I know the map looks different, okay? Because this is my fourth time playing this uh, side with the Russians path. The game keeps crashing, so I've lowered the graphics and I've lowered everything. So if you're seeing this, it finally worked and I did the right thing. And if you're not seeing this, then, well, then uh, another version of the game that even worse will be, pull <laughs> will pull will be pulled up. Uh, I've got, like, low graphics. The sea is just blue. You know, I actually kind of like this sea. I prefer if the ocean looked like this, to be honest. It's actually so much cleaner. Um, apart from that, uh, I actually don't want to click the button straight away. I want to improve relations with Russia before we do this. Otherwise, they will reject us if they say if we're like negative. So let's uh, do this one first, and hopefully the game doesn't break. Okay, brilliant. The Russian Empire accepted. Good. A wonderful news has arrived. There we go. A toast to our Russian friends. Now that means we have joined the Moscow Accord and we have allied with Greece and we will be at war with the Ottoman Empire. Okay, the Ottoman Empire, we're going to come and take back some of some of the land. All right, uh, join wars. So we get the jump on them. We actually will get a pretty good jump on them because you can see that their, their borders are not completely full. So let's go. You can call this the bad graphics ending if you want, but it doesn't matter. We invaded the Ottoman Empire nonetheless the same as we would with the good graphics. And essentially it was pretty easy. The fall of Constantinople happened pretty quickly and uh, it was all just a piece of cake from there. Hey, there we go. The Ottoman Empire capitulated. Okay. 
Look, the game keeps crashing. I'm not gonna force it beyond here. That's going to be the ending. You have decided to send an invitation to Prince Kirill or something. We have 5% stability. Hey, there he is. Look at him. That's the man. If we were going to make a Bulgarian Empire, we would need a lot of equipment. So I started buying some equipment off random people because uh, I couldn't produce it myself. And after completing a few questionable focuses, like the status of Bulgaria's Jews, we were ready to form a new Bulgar Empire. A new Bulgarian em a new Bulgar Empire. With Lukov having decided to invite Tsar Kirill, a new idea emerges within Zveno to lead a crusade to restore the glory of Bulgaria under a new empire. With the initial preparations finished, it is time to launch a reconquest of our birthright. Look at all of these claims. We re we shall restore Bulgaria glory under the Tsar. Look at this. Look, I'm so I could just scroll on through all the claims, man. Look. I don't even know where half of this stuff is, but hey, I'll take it. And then we can declare we're on the Ottomans, as they're already struggling against their Arab revolts. We can either put an end to the other empire, get a war goal against the Ottomans, or we can get a war goal against uh, Serbia, Greece, and uh, Romania. Well, Rhodesia, apparently. Now now it's Rhodesia. Okay, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, dude, putting go, going against the Serbians and Greeks could be so good right now, because they're currently at war with the Austrians, hey? You know, I was thinking about declaring war on both at the same time, the Ottomans and the Belgrade Pact. However, I did not think that would be a good idea, you know? Just better safe than sorry. So I ended up just declaring war on the Belgrade Pact. Oh, we're just walking in, man. I want to make sure that we have adequate war score to take all of our claims, though. Like, I want to be able to take our claims. Yes, I was worried about joining the war this late would lead to me not having enough war score to take all of my territory that I wanted to, so I made sure that I encircled a bunch of divisions and just took as much land as I could without capitulating them. Oh, there we go. World War II, World War II has started. There we go, they're going to be at war with Britain. And probably Russia soon, considering they're in the Moscow Accord. The Second World Korea, yep, there it is. And only a little bit later, Russia intervened. But I was very surprised because Ukraine and Russia did not go to war. They actually worked together. And after a few months of endlessly throwing my men at the Belgrad Pact, they would finally capitulate, and we did end up getting enough war score to take all of our claims. Ease up conscription, demobilize our economy. No, we're gonna go to war again, okay? You got air? We got these guys invading. They've got dudes here, man. Do you reckon it'll still work, though? Yes, our plan to go around the Straits of the Bosporus and the Dardanelles was a great success. We made a naval invasion to land in Smyrna. I, I don't know, I think that's how you say it. Anyway, we landed, and after throwing our men into the opposite direction than we did against Serbia and Greece, we managed to capitulate the Ottomans, too. Proclaim the Third Empire, with Constantinople in our hands, and our brothers lost in enemy lands saved. It is high time to officially announce the birth of the third Bulgarian Empire to the world. Long live Tsar Kirill, long live Zveno, long live Bulgaria. Look at that. Bulgarian state now becomes the third Bulgarian Empire. Look at this. Political power gain, division organization, recovery rate, attack, AI modifiers, AI modifier on offense. Gains caught on, yep, these are, I think these are Albanian places. Tirana, I know is. I don't know about that one, but yes. Brilliant. There we go. Oh, we're a different color. A new flag. Look at our flag. That is so sick. The Bulgarian Empire. That is so sick, man. I don't lie. We have conquered the Ottoman Empire. Well, the remnants of the Ottoman Empire. Beautiful stuff. All right, we can just annex all. Don't see why not. Don't see why not. Now, we could have liberated a loyal Turkey in Anatolia, however, it would not be a proper empire if we weren't to just military occupy the entirety of the Aegean coast and the Anatolian desert. You know, I just annex all of it, I'll take it. And we were not done. We still had one more war goal to fight, and that was against Romania, but I was actually kind of scared. Romania had been doing nothing this whole game, and they were kind of powerful. I've had enough, then we're waiting around. Although there may have been a huge river in the way, separating Bulgaria from Romania, that did not stop the age-old tactic of just concentrating my tanks and breaking through the line. If we can get this guy across, yes. The full of Bucharest. Bucharest is ours, okay. We can essentially just push now. Oh, yeah. That is huge. 50, okay, look at this. We've mastered the art of war. We've mastered the Bulgarian Third Empire. It's just, it's, it's, the, new, it's the new war machine. There we go. Good, Romania capitulated. I think that is everything. Alright, obviously annex all. Take whatever they have. Perfect. Alright, there we are. 
Oh yeah, it's got to be that one. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll just keep it, I think. Yeah, we'll just keep it. And there it is. Bulgaria, after being humiliated by the concession of land to the Belgrade Pact, would rise up and form a new Bulgarian Empire. In fact, the third Bulgarian Empire, and would live for a hundred years. So you have decided that totalism is the future. Uh, we have a new leader, Stoyanov, a uh, totalist party. They become the ruling party, national populists then join the coalition and will be known as the Bulgarian Social Republic. Oh, look at this flag, man. That's a crazy, oh, look at that, that's sick. Okay, what do we have access to? We go down, yep, we're gonna try to go down there. Now with complete control over the country, this man can now work towards his real goals and his dream of forming Yugoslavia. Yep. However, we are going to do the Yugoslav dream. The Slavic peoples of the South live in fear and misery. Exploited by oligarchs and unscrupulous socialists, this cannot be, this cannot continue. It is the destiny of the Bulgarian people to liberate them and guide them towards a bright future. Look at this, claim on essentially the Balkans. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's, it's a lot of, well, it just keeps going. There we go. Wars and claims map mode. We claim all the way up to like Italy, man. Oh my gosh. Not only would we have to go to war with the Belgrade Pact and Serbia and Greece, but also the Sarajevo Accords, which included Austria, Hungary, Ilria, and now apparently the Ottoman Empire. Easy clap, easy clap. Perfect, okay. Let's choose another focus as well. The war goal against Albania, but we get cores and all of that as well. Does this bypass? No, okay. So we'll get cores on Albania when we deal with them as well. And with our declaration on the Belgrade Pact, the forces of Serbia and Greece stood no chance with not just the Austrians, but me also invading their country. Hey, Serbia just good. Okay, they finally took it. Um, Sorry, I'm eating ice. It's again, very hot. <laughs> Despite the scorching temperatures in my room, I was still able to take out the rest of the Belgrade Pact myself, and I did end up getting a big chunk of the war score. So now, I was in a very difficult position. I knew I had to go to war with Austria, except I shared three different borders with the Sarajevo Accords. I can't believe the Ottomans joined the Sarajevo Accords, that's so annoying. How many divisions I got? One! I can't even cover that! There's no way we could wait, we, this, so we have to wait, we have to wait. Now I was beginning to doubt my ability to win this war. I was just having to wait and pump out more divisions, but then something happened. Austria joined the Second World War. Oh, Austria declares war. Austria's intervened. That is wonderful news, man. But I knew that wouldn't be enough. I was waiting for something bigger, and I had just the idea in mind. There was a new faction that formed called the Polish Intermarium. And if I could get them to go to war with Austria, I was in with a real chance. Poland declaring war on Galicia. Boom. There we go. There's there's the there's the issue that they have. And then Sarajevo Accords goes to war with the Polish Intermarium. And then we declare war on Austria. Just saying that's an op that's an option. That that could happen. So I spent all this time waiting, and while I was waiting, I was creating an army as big as the Soviet Union, okay? I, I had like 1.5 million men in my army by the end of this time I waited. 136 divisions. Hillary only got 78. We've built it up to 120, all right? Our army is a 1.5 million strong, all right? I don't plan on pushing into Greece or pushing into Ottoman Empire. I just want to take Hungary out, or maybe even just, yeah. The goal is to take Hungary out first. Now I was ready. I had my men mobilized, my battle plan ready, and now I just had to declare war. And then as soon as I did, that plan was thrown out the window because it didn't work. Do something like this, just so we can try and like hold Constantinople, like just hold outside Constantinople and hold that. Hey, okay, good. They should hold that. Now I finally had a better border with the Ottomans that I could hold a lot easier, and the Greece front wasn't really moving, and so I could fully push towards into Ilria, and I was I was obsessed over this one obs one encirclement that I tried so hard for so long to get. You can survive, okay? This, and this will be crazy, we'll win the war much quicker, right? You do this, you survive without food for a week, you get to go home a lot easier. 99, come on. Oh my god, we did it. Now all I had to do was take that one port that was giving them supply and finish up the encirclement, and it was uh, pretty satisfying.
And the Polish Intimarium, I don't know if I mentioned already, they are at war with uh, the Sarajevo Accord. So I got pretty lucky there. So the, the Hungary was falling. Why is Poland close to capitulating? Dude, why is Poland close to capitulating? Now, I'm pretty sure the entire work was done by the Czech Republic, but I would like to make a notable contribution that I kept most of the Austrian and Ilrian and Hungarian armies away from the Czech border, so they were able to walk into Austria and Hungary. That's the only reason they were able to do so well, okay? Isn't it? We, uh, we distracted the, uh, the army. Austria. Beautiful. Okay, okay, okay. Dude, that's everything. That's all of this as well? No, I don't know. We, yeah, we're going to claim this. Now, for some reason, Illyria didn't capitulate. I think they left the Sarajevo Accords. That's why we have to do it on our own. But that's actually for the better, because then we get all the war score for, uh, for Illyria. Beautiful. There it is. All right. We have all of the war score here. So select all and select all. Perfect. All right, confirm and exit. Now that Zagreb and Belgrade are officially under our control, not just occupation, we could announce ourselves as Yugoslavia. Done it. After indefatigable, in, in defeat, in, I, de oh my gosh, indefatigable. Okay, moving on. And much bloodshed. Our South Slavic brothers are finally free and united under our benevolent hand. All that remains is to officially proclaim the new Yugoslavia, a strong state for all Yugoslavs, but where the Bul Bulgarians, having bled and sacrificed so much to realize this dream, will preserve a dominant place in the leadership of the new country. Bulgarian Social Republic will be known as Yugoslavia, add the only, tr add the only true Yugoslavs, which grant daily political power again. Power gain, division attack, just for walk all time, defense and offense, stability, and gains core on fully level. And there we have it. The dream realized Yugoslavia. A massive Yugoslavia. But I am going to do these fate decisions because I do want to make it actually look good. So, in terms of Greece, should we... They're technically part of the Balkans, right? Are they, they're not Slavs, though. That's the problem. So Yugoslavia is only for Slavic people, so it doesn't make sense having Greeks or Anatolian people in there at all. I think it would be cool if we just occupied it, because, like, Constantinople and stuff. Give it to the Hellenic Socialists. Split it between. Give it to Turkey. No, no, no. We, see, they're just going to argue if we do this, right? If we just have it, and then, then, then there's no issue. There we have it. The Bulgarian people sacrificing many of their lives just to have Yugoslavia born.